couple of mockers for the road. It was literally just a Starbucks on the go. It wasn't even a Starbucks, Starbucks. And then the car wouldn't start. Literally Guys, wouldn't start. I was crying. I filled the car up with fuel and um, the car wouldn't start. We've got like a put your foot on the brake, stop, start button car. And it just Useless. the engine just wouldn't turn on. Of course, as soon as it doesn't turn on once, Ian's absolutely raging, going, I hate this car. I do hate the car. He doesn't like the car now, apparently. I've not liked it for a while. Oh, okay, for a while. Um, but as soon as like one little thing doesn't work perfectly, like the screen stopped working the other day. Yeah, exactly. And he just instantly fumes, though, rather than yeah. just trying to work out how to no, fix it. Too right, I should be fuming. Yeah, but there's one button and you no, just have to restart I'm, it. I'm paying money. No, that shouldn't happen. I'm paying a lot of money for a time. car. I don't need, I don't want it to be broken. I know what you mean, but just like, give it a sec before you fume. Anyway, <laughs> so we're like checking doors, we're checking, I'm like, did you put, um, did you put unleaded in, or did you put in diesel, blah, blah, blah. It's a stupid question. Um, he keeps trying it, and he's trying the accelerator, and I'm like, it's not the accelerator, it's the brake, isn't it? Um, blah, blah, he got out, got back in, no, I got, went, no, no, press no, brake to stop. no, that's press not the true. Brake. I got out, locked the car, unlocked the car, come back in, and then it worked. So that was the reason as to why. Or was it because you put your foot a bit more on the brake? No, it, no, it wasn't. Don't say that because that's actually annoying me. <laughs> no, it was just one of those unfortunate things that he was in the driving seat when it obviously had a funny vibe, but it made out like he was being no, he didn't. a dumbass. No, he didn't. I went outside and locked I'm sticking up for you here and you're still fuming. No, because you're not, you're, not, you're not understanding. I went outside the car, locked yes, it, unlocked it. I know what you're it. saying. I just said it had so a funny five minutes. and So it, you locked it, unlocked it, and then it was works. You need to calm down. You need to. Anyway, welcome to this week's YouTube video. As you can tell, it's road trip time. We're actually coming back from up north we're going from north to south because i was meant to film this on friday when we were going south to north but somebody <laughs> was wearing a little sassy pants no, no not sassy doing he needed he needed a bit of time i don't think he said two words to me the whole journey with a little bit quiet and no, I thought, oh, right, okay, if we try and no, film no, this see you make me out sound like like a horrible individual no, I'm, I don't. I'm really not i'm actually really nice I don't make you out to be horrible. But, but what? I, no. Sometimes so we, you're just not in the mood for it, and that's fine. No, no, no. no sometimes no. I'm not in the mood for it. No. So I put my headphones in because Chelsea was on Are a we phone. We on the toll. On, on a phone working. I clicked no toll. We're not on the toll road. It's fine. Um, what was he saying? Ah, oh, <laughs> you you had a little minute on Friday. I put my headphones in because Chelsea was doing work on her phone yeah. and then I took my headphones out once I asked her a question and she didn't answer me so I was like ah, fuck you I'm putting my headphones back in then no come on now you were a little bit oh no I was no no solemn no. I, solemn is the word I think it was because I was pissed off they were leaving at quarter to eight I don't mind driving long journeys I mind driving long journeys when it gets to That's the time of half seven quarter to eight eight o'clock and you're only leaving then. I'm, 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 I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Never will be okay with it. So Goldie, you need to learn that you're getting up. So it is about Goldie. I will drag you out of bed. Oh, We're not way. doing this anymore. But it wasn't too bad. We got there at two, like, is what it is. No, we got there before two. Well then. Did we? Don't know, but chill you. Yeah, we, we, got there. we got there about one. Anyway. Before, ten to one it was. Ten to it one. Was 12, well, it was fine 51. then, isn't it? Oh well, yeah, but I just didn't All want I'm it. saying is that you, were, you weren't in vlog mode. You were in fume mode. I was in my um, country mode. Listening you to were Martin in your Waller. country mode. <laughs> and then I was listening to RFK. Big up RFK. <laughs> Anywho, now is we're, we're both in good moods, aren't we? And we're ready for this Q&A vlog while she's chill as well and not screaming. Let's get this Q&A done now. I love a Q&A. I think I read them at the time, but I haven't read them since and Ian hasn't read them at all. So this is gonna be very raw and real. I hate that. I know, me too. Carry on. Um, right, let's go to the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. 
This is cute. Are you both proud of yourselves? You really should be. That's it. I don't know what for and what about, but I'm here for it. This is a two. Is this a two-part answer where we both? Well, yeah, because it says you both. Um, I'm very, very proud of Chelsea. In this whole, shut up, Chelsea. In this whole journey of keeping a human alive for just over a year, the fact that you have. Feed my ego. It's not about feeding your ego, it's just being honest. The fact that you breastfed and continue to breastfeed, the fact that you used to, used to get up every two hours, go feed her, in and out of sleep. What about those days? Let me sleep because I was up at five or whatever, or only coming at midnight from work and blah blah blah, blah and just being on all round. Incredible mum to Goldie. Um, not as good as she is. Not as good as I am, Dad. <laughs> of course. I think when you become a first-time parent, however prepared you feel you are, Christ on a bike, you will never be fully prepared. No one can prepare you, even if it's like perfect timing and you're in a good situation or whatever, whatever. Christ, it is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. Hard. And obviously we in haven't moments. experienced the second child yet, no. and I know so many people, like everyone says, going from one to two is a lot harder because you're obviously juggling more little <clears throat> hurricanes. But at least with a second, or when we have our second, we know what to expect in that newborn phase obviously is going to be savage but do you remember like the newborn phase like every little like noise or gurgle or fart or burp or cry or she's dying. rash she's or dying. oh my god you literally shit yourself so many times so did I but there were a few occasions where you literally were like why is she doing that why is she doing that blah, 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 blah. and I'm like well I don't know because I don't know Oh, whereas I think we're going to be so much more like. I think. Yeah, she's all right. There's just relaxed. so much to learn and like to take in all in one go. Even just things. It sounds crazy, but like neither of us really. I'd only changed a few nappies before. You never, never had. Changed a nappy. Like and little things like that. Whereas obviously next time round, like that's not that's going to be an absolute. It's just autopilot now and like. Hi George. George has just messaged. Hi, George. Um, it's like, huh? anyway, that's going show. off on a tangent. Yes. I, but think I think we've smashed it. Like, I'm really proud of us. Like, done all right. I think we've done good. And I and I'm not like I know that some people are a bit modest and constantly been like criticising themselves or having like some kind of parental guilt. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure we haven't been perfect because what is perfect, but. I think we've taken to it quite well and naturally and I think we've worked well as a team yeah. which I'm proud of us for right next question that one was long oh was Goldie your first choice name or did you have other names I do think we've mentioned this before but maybe not on a vlog so let's mention it again I don't know I don't know if you know this already I'm sorry but no it wasn't our first choice, what we were going to go with for quite a while, which we're not going to use, are we, in the future, so I can say it. I actually don't know what you're going to do. Yeah, we won't use it, is um, Ray. Oh, right, okay, yeah, we're going to use R-A-E. Yeah. For a little girl, like a little ray of sunshine she was going to be. So my mum's maiden name is Raina, so it was going to be Raina George, and then shortened her to Ray. Well, but I don't like Raina. He wasn't keen on Raina as a first name, so we put Raina as a middle name, which is obviously... Goldie's middle name. Goldie's middle name and why we wouldn't use it again. Um, but yeah, it was going to be Ray for ages and then I, I literally saw Goldie on, um, I followed a few Instagram name pages. Um, there was one in particular that like lots of names that I liked kept coming up. So I'm like, oh, they're a bit of us. And I saw Goldie and I, I honestly, obviously I know Goldie Horn and Goldie looking chain. <laughs> the rapper or whatever. I think there's a music producer as well Goldie with all gold teeth or something Chelsea's obsessed and has an obsession that 
um, our children's name, they need to be very unique and nobody else can have them in the world. You like but different as well. I like, no, no, yeah. no, you're right. I like different, but you're, like, I would say a name that is different that I know that some people have and you're like, no, yeah. no. Like, I don't know anybody outside of the people that you've mentioned there, any other child or the amount of children that I've taught in my life, yeah. I've never come across a Goldie. Yeah, no, I haven't. Um, what I love, and um, the names that I love, right, are unique, different, haven't, <clears throat> don't know anyone with those names, but they're so simple and you can't, like, mispronounce them. That's the names that I love. Yeah, there was a few names that we liked, but then a couple of weeks later, Chelsea was like, oh, we can't have that because they might pronounce it that way yeah. and that will do my head in. I and don't want to go, my... no, the name yeah. is yeah. this. Yeah. Um, we have actually, I mean, obviously we might change our minds, but we have actually like chosen future babes' names, um, which aren't, again, the most weird and wonderful names. No, but we really like them, don't we? But we love them. Yeah, but no, but that's what I'm them. saying. They're not like crazy unique, but just... No. But I don't know anyone Yeah, I don't know anyone These names. Them. And they're simple. I think they kind of match with the theme of Goldie, if that makes sense. Because I think generally with your kids' names, it's either like they're all traditional or they're all modern or they're all whatever. They've all got a vibe. And it's a, it's a Goldie, they're, yeah, Goldie vibes. Anyway, yeah, so... It was going to be Ray. Little Ray Ray. Ray Ray. Which is cute still, isn't it? I still like it. I still like Ray. I love Ray, actually. Not for a little boy, though. because I boy. feel I feel like... Sounds like a 60-year-old man. Yeah, isn't it weird? But for a little girl, like a little ray of sunshine. I feel like she pull it off. A lot of girls are called Aurelia. And then they're... Yeah, see, I don't... I don't... I don't yeah. Those, like, names that are, like, Aurelia and... I don't know, like, beautiful, really, really pretty names. Stunning... But they're not us, are they? No. Like, I love the name Florence and, like, those really pretty names. Um, I'm trying to think of more. Like, Ada, Adelaide, Ad Adelaide, Adela I don't know. Sorry? Like, I don't know. What are you trying to say? Adelaide. Adelaide? That's Australia. Yeah, it is. Adelie. Um, anyway, those, those really pretty names, I think they're stunning, but I don't think they're us do you know what i mean no. is danny or any of the other beaker gang gonna be at your wedding oh that's a nice question so um ben who played bouncer is like one of my best best mates i don't speak to him loads he's one of those like best mates that you can speak to every few months but it just doesn't matter and it's like you just like fill each other in on each other's lives and then like that's enough but i think that's also like a girl guy friendship as well because girls talk more often I mean you're like that with your guy mates you don't speak all the time anyway so Ben um, was obviously invited to the wedding but because he's over in America now and he's like sorting out visas etc he can't make it um, which is absolutely gutting but completely understand um, Danny I was thinking about this the other day because I've obviously got quite a bit closer to Danny in more recent weeks doing all these beaker teas with her um but i mean i haven't double checked with her actually but she's doing panto this year and our wedding is literally a few days before christmas so i'm, I'm pretty darn certain that girl girl will be busy um but yeah but those would would be the with the only two that i'm like super super close to how do you get yourself to love working out i've got a little one the same age but i find it so hard um Actually, that's quite a good question for us both because we both, obviously I've got Fit Peach. I have to say with Fit Peach, I do get a little bit of an advantage because I absolutely love working out and I love my job, but also I have to do it. Like I don't have a choice. I have to do a minimum of three workouts a week, but I do like to do extra ones as well. Like for me sometimes like yoga and whatnot, when, I, when I'm not filming them and I don't have to think and I can just, one, follow someone else and like I say, just get it done without thinking. <clears throat> but also, I think it's really important as a fitness instructor to consistently keep learning and getting ideas from other instructors because that's what it is essentially. You're constantly still learning because otherwise you can get stuck in a bit of a rut yourself. So yeah, so I do try and do the odd other workout, but I don't do loads, I won't lie. Like my workout <laughs> without without bragging, my workouts are good enough. You know? Oh, yeah. 
I, well, I find them good enough. I'm not like training for anything specific. So mine, my workouts are general, but I love them. I love doing them. That's why I teach the specific ones that I do because I love them. Ian, I will let you speak in a minute, Angel, but does works out more for his like mental health. I mean, and for physical health, obviously, but you like really push yourself and make yourself go because you feel better for it. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I am a, a gym lover. Mm. I, I go because I know that I need to do it for my health. Um, and I'm really strange that I think about 30 years in the future and I need to be still strong, still physically fit. We want to be like running around, exactly, yeah, as I grandparents. I don't want to get to the age of 50, 60, 70, going, oh, this hurts, oh, yeah. that hurts. And, oh, it's just because of my age. No, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to accept that. Yeah. Um, so I go I go to the gym. If, like, if it was down to me, I'd go seven days a week because I know that every time I go, I leave and I'm like, I'm so glad I've done that. And I just feel better and I feel happier within me when I go which then makes me better and happier to live live with at home. So yeah. it's essentially... So I let him go. It is essentially of... It's essentially just saying, I, I need to go for, for my own sake. And bless him, when he's on early, he's done a six to a half two shift. He comes home, takes over for, for with Goldie so I can then work. And then once Goldie's asleep, at like 7 p.m. he then goes to the gym which is such a savage time because he must be so knackered and really not in the mood for it. And then he comes back, like makes his food for the next day and then he's got a 5 a.m. start again. I so, what, what I'm actually, saying... Sorry, I was just going to say, I find it harder on the late when I get up, when yeah. I get in it, go to bed at like quarter to one and my alarm goes off at seven to then go to the gym to make sure I'm back at like half nine for you to start work. Yeah. Listen... Like two things, because obviously this is like more of a question of like wanting to motivate this person. One, there's a huge difference between motivation and discipline. Motivation lasts for 48 hours. Like if you get excited about if you get excited about something, if you start something new, if you've got a new pair of trainers, if you've got a new playlist on your or Spotify, or whatever that can keep you going, that's not going to last long. So that's where discipline needs to kick in. So a bit of tough love, like forward think think of those years ahead of how you want if you don't use it you lose it and then it'll only get harder and harder and harder so trying to form a routine and be consistent is absolutely key and it will it will get easier because it will just become a habit and then it will be part of your everyday anyway and you won't even think that it's hard or whatever secondly having said that about the discipline and like get on with it type vibes don't be hard on yourself that you have to work out every single day. Like I said, like he might want to, but I only do like three, maximum four a week. And they're like half an hour each. Like if you get a good workout in that gets your heart rate up, gets gets you sweating, and you get good old like muscular fatigue where you're doing strength work, so you're, you're working the muscles, as well as getting a good stretch at the end, that's all you need. Like unless you're training for a marathon or a triathlon or like some kind of bodybuilding competition that is obviously, or any kind of sport that's very specific, stop like putting loads of pressure on yourself to do a certain amount. Just do enough to keep your heart healthy, keep your your, your joints supple, keep your bones strong. Like, you know, so half an hour is nothing. And I know, listen, I, I can say this now because one, I'm a mum. But I also, I'm a working mum, I run my own business, I, I am very busy, I know that my business is to do with fitness, I get that, but I still have to fit it in around everything, and even I, I'm a busy person, I can still be scrolling on my phone or watching telly for longer than 30 minutes a day if I add it all up. So I, I, I do think 99% of people can find half an hour somehow, it might not be pleasant, it might be a bit of a chore and a ball ache but I think everyone most people you will say nice enough said just to cover my back and you know what you'll never regret it you'll never regret a workout right next are you both ready for your big day and what date is it you're getting married if you don't mind me asking 
I was thinking about this the other day, like, oh, should we, do we say the date or do we keep that? But then I put something up the other day with the date on, so. I thought everyone would have known. Yeah, everybody so we are getting married, I love numbers, on the 20th of December, so 2012, 2024. I like that, because obviously 12 is half of 24, so it's 2012, 2024. Just, I just, ah, oh, it just needs to look a certain way and like be a something. Also, it's my nan and granddad's wedding anniversary who are no longer with us so that's like a little little bit special as well um it's a friday which is nice it's obviously the last friday before most people like break up for work or whatever if you're in a work that finishes for christmas um so it's pure christmas vibes but without being christmas and tacky it's actually not very christmasy other uh, it's, it's kind of a gentle a gentle christmas theme um are you ready for your big day babe oh god um yeah, I, yeah. He's I had mean, one I, job. Like I've had one job, and that's get the suit. And it came, tried it on at the weekend. So you literally tried it on yesterday. Um, yeah, yesterday. So it's all right. So yeah, he crack on. Fit instantly. I went. I do. <laughs> no, it looks so nice. It was really, really smart. Um, but yeah, I haven't really done much to for the wedding. Um, Chelsea's done it, and I'm sure it's going to be everything that. It's going to be amazing and everything um, that Chelsea wants and that's the most important thing. Yeah, like I keep joking like that he's only had one job or blah blah blah, but that's exactly the way I want it. Like if he started to get involved, I'd be like, a, a, a shot, blah, blah. what do you think you're doing? Like, I'm I'm the control freak here. This is my, my I know job. that it's our day, but it's your day. You're the one who, like if it was down to me, we'd just get married in a registry office. The smaller the better, literally. Um, but awesome. that's not what Chelsea wants, so I yeah, yeah just, I just I wanna make should, memories exactly. with so family um, and just it's a stupid amount of money for what it is, I completely agree with that. But it's Chelsea's day and as long as Chelsea it enjoys the day then I'm happy. But yeah, I feel like I'm on top of it. Obviously there's lots to do still because there's lots that you need to do really near the time, but so far I feel quite organized and on top of it. The last few weeks I've been in like wedding mode um, and I'm really chill about it, really enjoying it still. There's no stress yet. There probably will be close to the time. If you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would your dreams job dream jobs be? So like in my previous life is what I call it, obviously my dream job was always within, within performing somehow. Like when I was a kid, it was musicals, and then when I like grew up, it was more um, like TV, film acting. I went through a phase where I wanted to be a professional singer. Like I love all of these things, but obviously there's loads of specific jobs within the industry. Then I really wanted to be like a presenter. I've been a bit like here, there, and everywhere with that industry, and then I dropped it all together and went into fitness. Um, I absolutely love fitness, and I that is one of my I would say dream jobs. Um, but now that I've started YouTube, I know this sounds really dramatic, I feel like this is giving me the the love and the fire that I had for like performing. Because I feel like I'm almost presenting, like I'm just being myself, I'm not obviously reading a script or being a character. But I feel like I get the same kick out of it. So it's if, your own world, isn't it? if we could do YouTube full time. Yeah. I think I, I, I would, I would still do fitness because I'd be doing my own fitness anyway and I love like the community vibe that comes with it. If we can make YouTube um, a full time thing then I think it would um, be great for both of us. I know what your dream what? job would be. Go on then, what? Full time dad. Yeah. Yeah. Ian would love to be a full time dad. Yeah. And that is absolutely a job. When we make a full time income from YouTube then... When? You know, I'm allowed to have my notice and at work because of that, then that is a dream, you know, you've created time for yourself, you've created a little bit of income from yourself and you get to spend it with And it'll be the time freedom that we I think that's really the dream desire. Isn't it? That's think, the dream for us. Um, but still like being able to work from anywhere. Work from anywhere, travel travel. Bit, uh, travel with the kids. We'll turn what, into a travel vlog guys. What if I was gonna go down into a conventional job should I say I think I've had my time over again it would be I'd work in work in sports yeah um, or I would um, become Prime Minister <laughs> yeah so Ian 
like his thing, his incredible intelligence and knowledge is in sports. Like it blows my mind. I always think he should be a commentator. Like his knowledge just, I, I don't have that much expertise on any topic at all. But he's also very passionate about like politics and, and history and everything as well. Anyway, so oh Christ, if you ever get in a in a conversation with him, he'll be chewing your ear off for hours, which I find fascinating. But I it goes straight over my head. I don't have the intellect to absorb. Um, but I yeah fully respect it. But yeah, I think he should be. I always thought he should be a commentator. But yeah, right, quick one. Best film or TV that you've watched this year? Oh, this year? Yeah. Um, we watched The Teachers the other day. Is it called The Teachers? The Sheridan Smith was the first series and then Cara Twinton was the second. That was on Channel 4. Quite enjoyed that. That was good. Are you okay, baby? Any others that you can think of? Um, we watched um, The Perfect Couple. Oh, yeah, the Nicole Kidman one. The, that was good. It made you think. It was like, oh. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, and also the other day, the Amy Winehouse thing. Yeah, Amy Winehouse. I can, only th- I can only remember things I watched in the last couple of weeks. Um, guys. I watched a great film that I I really enjoyed. It was about how McDonald, the founder on Netflix, how McDonald's was created. I haven't seen that. Um, you must have watched it without me. I did when you was on your hand. Uh, oh, and I'm also obsessed with Married at First First Sight UK, the new one. I just love trash TV like that. I just think it's excellent. Um, I'm going to watch something called The Monsters. Oh, that is good. It's with the two brothers. How do you know if someone is right for you? Christ. If you know, you know. Honestly, I didn't meet Ian until a couple of weeks before my 30th birthday, right? And in my 20s, I had a few interesting relationships, right? All I can say is, it should be effortless. Like, honestly, from day dot with E, it was natural it was effortless there was no drama there was no like doubt or like questioning things like the communication was just like there it was just it was just an honest simple effortless relationship i think a lot of things go wrong when you just don't, don't communicate yeah when people bottle things up or don't talk so openly and honestly and i think that's what me and chelsea did we spoke so open and honest the first day that we met each other and it just made everything else pretty simple like we had deep conversations early on didn't we i mean obviously that's because i guess we were like first couple of hours <laughs> yeah like heading like late you were late 20s you were 29 and i was just turning 30 so like yes that's going to be different conversations to when you're in your early 20s but it just made us both open up more and feel like we were able to be vulnerable with each other and not questioning, oh, is that going to be too much for someone? Is that going to be that? Is that, going to be that? The biggest thing for me is energy. Like if it's all about compatibility with someone, and and if someone makes you feel good about yourself and is giving off a great energy that will only encourage good energy coming from you, then you're just going to bounce off each other. Whereas if you're constantly in doubt and questioning things and like wondering how to word a message or or did you, I say that right? Or yeah, I mean, the maybe mo- you're not the, compatible the, energies. The, the moment that you start doing things like that, in my opinion, it's not going to last. If, if you're sat I know there that sounds saying, a bit harsh. If, if you're sat there saying, "Oh, is this person going to get offended if I say this?" or "Can I say it in that way?" or this, no, you should be allowed to say, if you're going to be with that person for the rest of your life, whatever you want and how it sounds in in any way. If it, even if it sounds terrible, you should still be allowed to say to that person... Your opinion. Your, your opinion. Never change for somebody. Never change, ever, who you are. And when you meet somebody and you feel like you don't need to change for them, then you know that you're onto something. Love that from you. Right, final question. Bit of a random one. Um, has Gigi been on holiday yet? Which I assume... Well, maybe not, but... I put up the other day, we got her passport, her first passport came through the other day, guys, I can't, it was so cute, like, she's beaming, she's smiling, because obviously when they're under six, you don't have to keep a straight face, I just find it hilarious that this is one of her, like, (laughs) most passports, obviously, like, everyone looks like a convict, um, (laughs) so, she hasn't obviously left the country yet, we've only just got the passport, 
but her first holiday ever is going to be our honeymoon to the Maldives like what a bougie bitch um, fantastic and then we have got a, a family holiday booked next year haven't we as well to Portugal which is going to be lovely like a bit later on in the year um, and then hopefully fingers crossed that we can um, do Ibiza maybe in the September yeah. time yeah I've never been to Ibiza I really want to go to Old Town Ibiza we're at Old um, Town not Party Town yeah but I might see if I can sneak into the show you can go. You and Goldie yeah. can go. Me and Goldie can go. Not really, guys. Um, that's absolutely not my vibe. Can't think of anything worse. Whereas Ian, like, loves some of the DJs, don't you? I do. I'm not really that type of person. Can I go? Is it Can I go that you love? Can I go Martin Garrix? Martin Garrix, you like? I like a few, a few of those. It's not my jam. Not really. Any, not massively anyone else, but yeah, I would go and I do enjoy watching them. Oh, can't be any worse. It's all very like crowded for me, and the music isn't my jam. Like where, where the fuck's Motown? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit more of an old soul, um, but that's fine. You go, babe, and I will be sleeping. That's kind of it. Like a few of the other questions are a bit too random, and and then like I've repeated what we've already already said, really, guys. Um, that was nice. I enjoyed that. I'm glad you're in a better mood. And I'm glad you got the car started. Shut um, Big love. That's half a heart, but I, my hand is holding the camera. Big love and shout out to our sponsors of this vlog. The incredible Cover My Bubble. Emma and team, we absolutely love you and we'll forever be shouting about you and forever grateful for you. Guys, if you have not got life insurance, and this is like if you've got a family, if you've got a mortgage if you've got any kind of like big life responsibility i really do recommend looking into life insurance critical illness cover bump cover child cover cover things like that obviously emma will give you her expertise and her knowledge and her recommendations but we do recommend going for single policies not a joint policy because if one of you needs to use the policy the policy is then used whereas if you've got single policies you have one each that is my top tip of the day but just go and give Cover My Bubble a follow, in fact. Even if you just do that, highly recommend. Just give their page a bit of a follow for a while. You will just see how kind and genuine they are. You'll love their reels, very down to earth, very colorful. And go and check out their story as well of, of how the business started because their story is very, very emotional. But what an amazing thing to come out of it. Love you guys. We have two hours, 21 minutes to go, my friends. Mama needs a wee already. Oh, services. We shall love you and leave you. Thank you for your questions. Would you like to end the vlog with anything in particular to eyes? Thank you very much <coughs> for watching. And we appreciate all, we appreciate all the love and support and uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. Sounds like something you'd write for your vows. Have you written your vows yet? Oh. Me neither. We're doing our own vows, guys. Please subscribe.